celebrate our retirees. I wasn't able to add up all the years because there's too many of them. But what we lost tonight in years of experience and what they've been able to do for boys and girls, I can see as we move along in the future, it's going to be very hard to make up that difference of what is retiring versus what we're, we're able to see that are new teachers coming in the door. And uh, those teachers learned in a way that uh, it didn't matter how you changed the curriculum. They knew how to teach it. And they knew how to get it across the boys and girls. And we are truly blessed to have had them in uh, their services for all these years to do what's best for boys and girls. And uh, I'd just like to tell them again how much I appreciate them and how much I thank them for all that they've done for us. So, I'm moving into the minutes. Uh, I'm trying to move to the minutes of the call of meeting on May 11th. Okay. Motion second. I need discussion, addition, changes, deletions.
building the water is probably about a half a million dollars. Any questions about any particular items?
new devices that were ordered a couple months ago for next year. So those are coming in, we're verifying those, processing, get them out of the boxes, get them in. Um, at the point that we're at right now, we're good about being ready for regular school startup next year uh, at the end of July. Uh, so we're just going to continue working on those. Also have a few teacher stations that are uh, teacher services that are coming in. With it being summer, we are into a, a pretty heavy project period. Um, you can see it at this table down here, uh, which is a basketball project table. We've got the spring optimization, which is what we launched into when everybody went home, took advantage of that time, and got some housekeeping tasks done. Um, the high school device that won it was actually ordered before the shutdown, so we were in position to be able to deploy those, and that is uh, that's the quickest process. Um, Next one I'm pretty excited about is called multi-track authentication. What that does is it is going to provide an extra layer of security on our district email system. If you're familiar with this, uh, in other systems that you use, you may know by the name of two-factor authentication or two-step authentication. What it's going to do is it's going to require one of our employees that is to submit a, a telephone number that you receive a text message. That way you can have site on the device and your location. Something that would require verification of, hey, are you actually still who you say you are? Then they can say yes. It goes to their phone, they put that code in, and that's another layer of security because it's uh, the second factor authenticates them as legitimate. So this will eliminate any sort of risk to someone getting a username and password on the email system and using that for anywhere overseas, and that would be cut out of the so, uh, we're, we're doing that. I sent an initial communication about that this morning. We'll be putting that switch uh, this Thursday and that. Evening. So um, that's the first part. The second part will be just kind of shepherding everyone, making sure they get themselves involved in that system and just being there for the uh, uh, We're also going to take uh, advantage of some server infrastructure that we've got as part of the market contract. Uh, I've got these units coming in once we today to the back and go with that one comes in to plug that into our, uh, our virtual server system so that we just keep those as far as we pray. Um, the, the, acid, the overall acid refresh, which is one of the high school women, is a total of 560 devices. Those are the new student key devices I just mentioned, but we are on track to complete those in July before uh, the end of the year start. And of course, our summer task is just a standard list of sort of uh, get ready items that we're working on to make sure that the school does start to get ready to go. So, um, from a high level, that's uh, the May report. Any questions? Will board members be included in that often? Often your school, your school email account, yes, sir. And uh, I see the initial you know, communication today. I will send a follow-up reminder prior to the switch uh, getting flipped. We're going to be including our hotline support number so that if someone has an issue, all they have to do is call. Uh, nothing more complicated than that, and we'll be able to help walk through them. Thank you, Matt.
fact, it only has one. So um, that greatly reduces the availability to occupy the building. We looked at original possible quotes off of it, and they range from $325,000 to $360,000. But the large majority of the cost was the bathrooms on that building. As we've moved into our new phase of understanding that when Mr. Leonard McCoy came in, is that we have a new school that was starting in, in, in building, and then we have capital outlay funds that are for renovation for two particular schools, one being the primary school and one being the middle school. In this process, you have basically two sets of funds in there that will produce those revenue services, capital outlay and slot. What I'm trying to do is complete all the projects under the umbrella of our new school, our new high school. The law has changed, and I'm working very closely with our architect. It used to be that if I was going to build a new high school and Tony had an air conditioning company, and he got the bids, and I could get all the bids from Tony based off of the new high school and the refurbishing of the other school. That law has changed dramatically, and it actually has to be designed by the architect and bid out again. However, you can still get a conditional good bid based off the bidder that would be in place for the new high school being able to do the same work. So basically what I'm telling you is this, is yes, we have to talk about it as we move forward. But I'm trying to put it off to when I get to the point that those people that are doing the work and win those bids would have an advantageous bid so it will bring the cost down. So if we need roofing, if we need air conditioners for all three of these buildings, that that cost factor of bidding will be very advantageous so we're not spending as much money. And that's why I'm kind of delaying the projects as we speak. I just met with Paris this morning. We had this discussion about these buildings and how we're going to move forward. We will apply July 1st for capital outlay money. That is a year out process from receiving. So if we did start those projects at those two uh, schools and this project, we would be fronting the money up front. The difference is for the project, for the maintenance building, and the actual wing and the library, that is just sloth money that we would be using for the new school that would have to be used for that repair. Correct, Thomas? So as we move forward, I'm trying to be very advantageous to start putting this to you as time as we get into this project and I start lining up what these projects will be and when they might be able to start. Um, for example, we have to determine those two buildings or three buildings that are separate, but then we're gonna have to come back and determine what is our three or four main items that we think that we need to refurbish in those two schools. If it's air conditioners, if it's painting, and it's lighting, bathrooms, that's going to take up quite a bit of money right off the bat. And it's going to eat up a lot of capital outlay money. We have to put money in based off of that capital outlay money that you saw before when, when Dr. McCoy made that presentation. So as we move forward, I'll be able to give the board a better idea of what these cost factors might look like in preparation for bids if that's what you so choose to do with these buildings that would be other than the two that we have to repurpose. So that's where we stand right now. Questions to the four has. What, what is the use, what is gonna be the use of that library? That's what we have to determine. Is the factor, is the library, is the cost factor to put bathrooms in it and use it as effective as just taking the old wing where the servers are already at 
putting a roof on it, painting it, putting new lights in it, putting some new bathroom fixtures in it, make it nice, and then we can occupy that building based off of the needs that we have. Are they using the old library at all now? No, sir. We're storing stuff. Other than storage, well, it's, it's not being occupied. And this right leaking is just the northeast corner is leaking. So it's not a great situation. <clears throat> so, what is registration going to be? For school? It's already started. No, no, no. I thought the, the registration part was going to be in that building. Well, we can either look at putting it in that building, or we can put it inside the wing where the server is, with multiple classrooms inside of that. Or we can leave registration where it's at right here in this building, and then move alternative services in our Hurricane Transition Academy over there. Because either way, we have a server um, issue that we, we have to protect them, and we're going to have to put a roof on it. There's no two ways about it. The difference is, are we just going to put a roof on it and not occupy it, or put a roof on it and be able to occupy it? So as we move forward, I need more to be thinking about that. And, and, um, and I'll be able to give you more information. And I'll be able to talk to you tonight about what it's going to look like for the start of school, what possibilities are out there, what people are telling us in surveys. That's got a lot to do with it also. Questions? Are that building that the server is in uh, by uh, law and safety and security and the uh, as it came in after 9 11, it is available for students because it's far enough away from the Federal Highway. That's correct. Yes. So we could use that. Yes, sir. And right now, the difference between the two buildings is it has both girls' bathrooms and boys' bathrooms at the end of the hallway. process we went up and, and uh, we received bids uh, Tuesday a week ago during that process as new law changes and new expectations change with companies I've always built buildings and it's been a hard bid you owe you take the envelope you open it up there's your bid you read it out loud you mark it down on your piece of paper the difference of what we have is is it's very similar in nature nowadays, but when you use a CM, there's some different components to it that a new law has changed and it has allowed the CM to have a little more variance. For example, we read through all the bids and I looked at the CM and I looked at the architect and I said, is that it? And they said, no. We will go back in and start looking at the bids that are late. So under the condition, you'll have bids that come in on bidding day. But there is a stipulation that allows for bids to come in after that date. What they do is they mark late on them. However, they're allowed to come in and are acceptable for bid. The difference is if there's no close date on it's open so for how long you want to keep it open people can continue to bid when i left the office and started on my way back here 
they called me, and there was over 30 bids that had come in based off of the facts. And email. So that changed the course of a lot of different things when we look at only having one bidder in certain categories. That's changed quite a bit. Working with Gray and that process, there's a piece of paper in front of you. We have been working very, very hard on this possibility of being a true factor. Right now, through partnerships that we have um, in this county and uh, through our architect firm, we are looking at the availability to be able to have one single road of access that will come into our school from the Irwin Highway and that road will go all the way out to Watergrass Highway. Now, I don't know what the name of that road is. Anybody want to tell me? Perry Island. Yes, Perry Island. So it will give us full access from one variance point to the other variance point, and it will be a both way access uh, for people to be able to come into the school. Working with this project right now, Nothing is complete. We are still waiting on several pieces of it. But right now, we are looking at a great possibility of getting a $3.6 million project done for free. That's how much money that road would cost. It's still in the works. The difference is is that when we put this in place to look at it as being an advantageous piece because it is extremely advantageous to the site plan, it changed and allowed for us to have to put off the site plan bids. As of today's meeting, the site plan bids along with phase B of athletic fields bids will come in Tuesday at 4 o'clock next week, I'll be in Macon <coughs> with Parrish. That availability of putting off, we were contacted by two major, major companies. And because of the COVID virus and everything else, they needed extra time based off the fact that they didn't have enough people to be able to get certain things into them. So we allowed for a week delay because we think the bid could be so advantageous, it could be between a half million and a million dollars difference. That's a half million or a million back to us to be able to do things for phase A and phase B. Next Tuesday, we will go up there at four o'clock. We will take the bids. After that meeting is done, we will sit down and we will go through our add-ons and we will start looking at what add-ons we had and any changes that we looked for. For example, we bid the concrete for the top of the roof. A lightweight concrete company came in and it changed it the afternoon of the first bid by a half a million dollars. So of course, that's a major uh, piece of the puzzle for us to bring the price school down. We're going to have to go through that and be very specific in nature of what they're able to come up with that would bring some of that cost down and be advantageous and put the whole plan together. So therefore, I will have to call on the board to have a meeting the Thursday before graduation so that you can approve the bids so that parish can get started. But it's going to take them from that Tuesday after our meeting all the way up to the Wednesday before we had the meeting of not Thursday morning to put everything together to be able to make a presentation to the board so that we can have the approval so we can start the school effectively immediately. So right now, we are in very, very good shape. The only issue we had was a slight delay based off of what we think is an advantageous bids that will be coming in for the site plan and uh, we're moving forward very quickly. Questions? I mean, we're only going to have a, have a day to go through the 
Ms. Teresa? Bid process right now will be open until Tuesday of next week because then they'll have to combine all the numbers. Make sure as this whole process that if, if a bidder came in, um, they have to bond, they have to have certain qualifications, and sometimes they just come in and, and say masonry. They just want to do the uh, block and, and they want to do the mortar, and that's all they want to do. But they didn't put in the employee cost or anything else. So that bid would not be a good bid to look at. And that's what they're going to do for us based off being a CN. The problem is, and I, I understand, is that some people want to look through it and go through it line by line. If we do that, the availability to get back together won't be until the 7th. And then they won't start to well after that of July. So now we're back to a time factor. And uh, that's to the pleasure of the board. My recommendation is, is that if we have questions that night, we can ask them and, and get the answers based off of that. But right now, we've been through since the beginning of May, and now we're already here going to the end of June just to get busy to them. And it keeps becoming a longer process. And uh, we're paying the CM to do that for us. So we need to look at what questions we have based off of that meeting or prior conversation with Parrish. If you have questions or call me, and I'll be able to get them on the phone or, or get you in touch with the right people. But right now, mobile units have started moving in on the land. If you go buy it, they're starting to move in. And um, Thomas and I and Dawn have sat down today to start looking at the uh, power quotes. And we'll start meeting with them to go through that process because all that has to be done by the time of next, the following Thursday when we get ready to do those bids. All the power quotes, I saw one from Georgia Power and one from Pittsburgh Utility. Did our one, DMC, put one? They mailed me a hard copy. Yes, sir. I have it in my office if you'd like to see it. Do it have? Yes, sir. Okay, sure. All right, so we need to schedule a meeting for June 25th? Yes, sir. We will. Is that good? Six o'clock. Yes, sir. And when are we getting information? For on the beach that night. Are we have to decide that night. Yes, sir. Uh, it's kind of pushy. I guess we're going to have a long meeting. Either that, or we'll push it off a whole another month. <coughs> I guess it's going to be a long meeting. Yes. Sir. Is there a possibility that some any piecemeal information could be provided to us later ahead of time? I'll give us study time. I will definitely call them tomorrow and ask them. Absolutely. Yes. So we call Turkey on it. Yes, sir. Any other questions on the construction? Do you mind repeating um, when we're going to meet? Thursday, June 25th. At 6. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, next item, request approval of USDA insurance. Yes, sir. Um, we've been very blessed the school system. We have received two grants that we've been working on. Dr. Bonnie Kelly from Wiregrass. 
um, two science grants. One will be a uh, availability that will provide us with mechatronics equipment. And the other is a national science grant that will train our teachers and we will create a new pathway for boys and girls off of, off of this. They will train our teachers and our kids are gonna learn how to test water. And they're gonna have to learn how to test water, put the projects together, and then they have to go before you all as a board and the science board and make a presentation of what they did, how they did it, and what they found. So this is a new lead-in to a career pathway of availability for testing water as cities and counties do. And uh, we're very, very excited about that. The third component is the Rust Grant. The Rust Grant is a $1.3 million technology online service learning grant. And uh, what I'm looking for is I, I explained to the board uh, at the last meeting that this is an infrastructure grant that supplies us with the availability to have equipment, have resources, networking, Wi-Fi, all the cameras, uh, smart TVs, all these things that will make it more available for us to offer online learning, especially with our partners. So for example, if we were down a math teacher at high school, then we could send in either another certified teacher that was not math, if they had a planning, or put a parapro in the class and they could sit in the class and watch the live streaming of the other class. So if you had a class of 30 and then had to have another class of 30, but you had a sub in there that was not certified in math, we can provide those services based off of that. The second piece is, is if you were taking a course at Wiregrass, and that course is full of wiregrass, we will be able to, via Learn Online, based off of this service from wiregrass for our kids to be in our building and take that course and get credit for it. We will be able to offer any partnerships from Irwin County that those kids will be able to take classes from us based off of that and share in school classes that we have together so you can have remote teaching of maybe they're doing this project we can put it in our class and share with our teacher in our class what they're doing and vice versa and uh, we're very very excited about that opportunity it is going to uh, be a new norm in a lot of cases and that's what we're preparing ourselves for and uh, in this process we're asking for approval to be able to go ahead and apply and move forward matt and his team uh, dr bonnie kelly and her team have been doing an outstanding job and uh, we're asking for the approval to move forward with the science grants mechatronics grants and implementation and then moving forward with the rust grant so there's no capital outlay for us no, just grants grants 1.3 million dollars of full infrastructure. I'd like to move to approve um, the application for both grants. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? Motion carries. Thank you. This is an upgraded version of the distance learning from the 90s without the big satellite dishes. That's exactly right. That's basically exactly what it is, is you're now using the cloud for your, your uh, online service. That's exactly what that is. Exciting. Yes. <clears throat> Especially with the availability for teachers now to have upgraded one-to-one -one and students have one-to-one -one when you're I'm going to get into that here in just a second in the discussion. Attending back to school. All right. Update on the opening of school for 2021. I just have a small PowerPoint to show you all. Um, our goal, my goal as superintendent, our goal as a school system is to return back to normal. 
Now, we've got a long way to go in order to be able to get back to that normal. But my goal is that we return back to school as normal as the calendar you voted on indicated. And that would be starting in July. Right now, as you know, the governor has come out with an executive order that requires 11 major um, recommendations that we must follow, okay? In there, you have the CDC with multiple recommendations of what they think we need to do. Now, the governor put in place that according to the public health department in your area, they're gonna look at ratio and tell you whether you're a high, middle, or a low risk. Right now, I got that today, and it shows us in our ratio being above the norm. And we're trying to get more information from the governor's office and public health office to say, what does that mean for us? Does it mean more conditions that we have to put in place? Or is it just an understanding that we need to be very aware and do everything we possibly can? As I make this report, and you're gonna see at the end, what we have to do is we have to understand this thing is gonna change daily. It's gonna change weekly. And we're gonna put a plan in place because people out there wanna know, what are we doing? And my goal is to return back to school as normal. And that pre-planning, we have our new teachers come in, so now you go to the next one. Our goal is, is just like the calendar says, new teacher orientation, pre-planning's the same, PLC day on the 27th, open house on the 27th that evening, and then the first day of school will be July 28th. As we look at it, it also contains the normal school calendar of what you approve based off of holidays and breaks and then PLC days that are in there. So I want everybody, teachers need to hear this, employees need to hear this, that it's the norm calendar that we're going back after to be advantageous. Sports calendar, middle and high school. Now, this is going to be one that's going to change constantly. As of right now, we will continue to follow the guidelines of the calendar that's in place by GHSA for sports programs. However, that is changing all the time. For example, Dr. Brook, he makes a full plan to go back to practice and how to practice and this and that and the other and implements it, meets with the staff. They walk out the door and he gets an email at the same time I do and I call him and I said, here's the new plan. Well, he had to go back and revamp the whole thing. Because right now, fall sports conditioning started today. It only lasts for 12 days. Now, here's the difference. If Mr. Sims was the coach, he can only work with 19 kids. If Mr. Gary is a football coach, he can only work with 19 kids, but he can't work with the same 19 that Mr. Sims working with. And they can't come in contact with each other. So Mr. Juan being a coach, he has 19, and they can't come in contact with any of y'all. And they can't use a football. They can weight lift, they can condition, they can be outside, they can run through drills. Same thing with softball, same thing with any other fall sport. They can condition, but they cannot. And they have to be specific following the guidelines. So I want y'all to think about that. So if I've got eight coaches out there and I got 19 kids apiece, okay, that's what, Mr. Jim, 150 kids? How are you going to get them all picked up for parents to pick them up after practice without coming in contact with each other? There's been some challenges, and there's going to continue to be challenges. We'll make the necessary arrangements and changes for students and adults so that we are full-blown safe as we can be as we move closer to the season. Couldn't we just get them to empty out the garden section at Walmart because anybody wants to can go out there. It, it would be uh, as advantageous. And they can have a football out there too. Big place. Yes, sir. 
it, um, they're very strict on the guidelines. And if you're caught, you know, putting the football out there, things like that, it's going to be a heavy, heavy penalty. And uh, it's like softball, you can't have it out there. But those guidelines have not been defined for marching band and extracurricular. But we're going to follow the same thing when they start of whatever's in place through your fall sports. So that everybody's on the same page and everybody has the same expectation as a parent and a child. Our COVID-19 plan for returning to school. We are working, y'all, as closely with the governor's office, the CDC, the State Department of Education, our EMC, our EMA services, and our local health department to determine what it is that it's going to look like. Right now, it looks like you can return to school. But nobody's defined whether I got to sit one in this seat and one in that seat, one a seat behind, it. you know, nobody's defined that yet. But they've also defined that you can feed kids in a lunchroom. So how can you not put kids on the bus? We are making every arrangement to beat all the mandated guidelines that are in the executive order from the governor's office to return to school. We're taking into account every recommendation that our public health department is going to make because they might have a few that might be more imperative according to what our risk factor may be that we might have to go and put in place. Here's the key. We'll change as needed. And we'll make those adaptations as we go along. When I deliver this to you this week, I'm telling you in two weeks when I deliver it to you again, it's going to be different. Because here's why. Your expectation is the governor is going to make another addressment this week. Okay? So let's say that he loosens it up more and now your water parks are fixing to come open. Um, apparently Florida opened every restaurant there was in, in place that you could go to this past weekend. So if we start doing the same thing, that's a, you're loosening the guidelines a little bit more. Disney World's going to open in July, the second week. So I feel when July comes and Disney World opens that things are going to settle down a little bit more, but be, people can be aware of, of their surroundings, but those guidelines are going to come down a little bit. Okay? The cleaning of schools. Y'all, we have brought in an eco-basive uh, spray company. We started spraying from the word go. We sprayed all of our schools, all of our buildings, all of our weights, all of our buses, and we've continued to do that. In fact, tomorrow, we start that rotation again. Is that correct? Thursday. Thursday. So we'll continue to do that. Mr. Newell made me aware today after meeting with Cinderella's that they have the availability to have sprayers, folders, and the chemicals to help us with this process as we move forward. That was great news because we were looking at plans of how we were going to do that ourselves. So as we move forward, they're going to be a great asset to help us in this process. For example, it, right now, if Coach Sims went in with his group of 19, used the weights, immediately Cinderella's got to come in, clean the whole place, and then Mr. Gary's group can come in. And they got to clean it again, and then the next group. And they got to clean it again, and it is constant all day. So we are, uh, we are looking at how we can help ourselves be more safe and have resources that are more available to be successful. Matt, go to the next one. Preparation return for the academic school year. This was a big one. Because of the great people you have in place, when the uh, epidemic occurred, during the epidemic, we were able to apply and provide multiple academic services for students. That was online services in multiple facets. And then we provided hard copy package for those people who need tangible items to work with and parents who wanted tangible items. Some people got both. 
Next column, returning to school. We are preparing for all students to return back to the normal school setting of instruction in the normal school day. Now, we have just sent out a parent survey. If you haven't got it, you will get it. And what we're asking parents is to tell us how they feel about sending their children back. Well, do you feel good about sending them back right now? Do you not? And if you don't, what about these options if you have them? Right now, it's 50 50. I pray that by July, when Disney World opens up, my expectation is, is that we will have 25% of our population that says they want an online service based off of health reasons or other medical concerns that they have in place. And we're going to provide them. So what we're going to do is send out another survey when we come back in July. And when the parent checks on their no, then it automatically goes to a form and they fill out the form and then we'll get with them as individuals and we'll look at what their individual education plan will be for their children at that time. Those will both be online services and hard copy packets at this time. Now we have picked up the availability to do some online servicing that is quite unique and more advantageous in different areas, especially K-5. We feel very, very good about the teams that are in place at these schools and what they've been able to put together for the process of boys and girls. Now, let's look at this. If I lose 25% to say they want online services, what then happens to classrooms in the most cases? Does the number go up or down? It goes down. So if it goes down, you have smaller class sizes. The difference is if you have 25%, you've got to have somebody that's going to progress monitor those kids, help those kids, teach those kids, take daily attendance based off of when they log in, log out. So the norm of the classroom is not going to look the same. Because if you eight right here or on one hallway of, of third grade, and now I only need seven classes and they're still small, one of them is going to teach online and progress monitor that. That becomes a new way of looking at things. Now I'm not saying that that's going to be in place, that that's what people are going to choose to do forever. However, we're here to provide a service. People deserve that opportunity. And we want to keep them here in Ben Hill County and provide that service for them. The second piece is, is that service, just like your pre-K, if you knew the number of people outside this county that participated with your daily pre-K and YouTube and everything else that they did, it was unbelievable. And I'm talking way off. We want to be able to do the same thing because that's advantageous for boys and girls to want to come be a part of Ben Hill County. So Sean, they haven't um, mandated that they have to have classroom size changes based on the uh, COVID? No ma'am, no ma'am. You're gonna see a pile of recommendations out there, but it's not a mandate. Okay. Is the state gonna allow us to claim that as seat time, FTE? Yes sir. That's exactly right. Yes, sir. You are providing instruction based off of that. We will be able to count all of that as FTE. That's why we will put a teacher in charge of that. Number one, for what's best for boys and girls. And then number two, for the ability to be able to count that FTE. So our contingency plan is that if parents are unable to attend the keep their kids at home, that we'll still be able to supply the same kind of academic education that we're doing with the currently, <laughs> but then some children will be coming to school. The children who are at home, will they still be able to participate in extracurricular activities as well? Ms. Shirley, that's a great question, and the GHSA has not ruled on that yet. So it's coming. Okay. And I can't give you an answer based off of, of, of what they're saying now. 
The difference is if they're a full time equivalent, that means they're enrolled with us full time. Under the conditions of waivers and our flexible option of what we have, I can't see why that wouldn't be a, an option. That's not really a homeschool, but that's all my learning. Exactly. Oh, What's the difference? You're going over here and doing the rolling, and you're taking online classes with Wiregrass. There's no difference. So the Rust Grant will make it even more advantageous based off of putting all that in place for kids to be even more successful based on The goal, don't get me wrong, and I want to make this loud and clear to everybody listening. The goal is I want all my students to come back to school. However, if you have a health or a major reason of concern based on uh, health conditions, um, doctors, um, notes, things like that, then we'll look at those services for those kids in, in an immediate way. And, uh, How would those precautions uh, uh, affect or uh, impact our staff, teachers in particular, who are more likely to have health issues that will put them in danger? That's a great question too, Ms. Shirley, and that will be on an individual basis based off of the conditions of what the law states and what uh, our lawyer is able to guide us in the right direction. So a teacher might be able, a teacher that's diabetic, over, uh, overweight, and et cetera, and et cetera, heart disease, might be able to teach online classes versus coming into the classroom. I can't give you a straight answer of yes or no to that yet because I don't know what the law states. There's too many waivers that have been in place for people to say, well, I'm going under this waiver, but the condition is if you return to normal school, then the normal requirements are required of you as a teacher or an employee. So I can't get those two mixed up right now. Makes it quite challenging for you. <laughs> yes, ma'am. What about your special needs? That's correct. That's majorly uh, we have a large population that's severe and profound okay and right now that's what i'm talking about is health concerns doctor concerns severe and profound that need and want services but we can do that based off either sending a teacher to them as we normally do under the EI, i mean the iep guidelines or we can provide it on online services Yes, ma'am. Um, the students that are doing online, if they decide not to come back to class, how would you uh, handle lunch for them if they require lunch or if they want lunch? You know, that's a great question. And we haven't gotten to that. We've started discussions about what that would look like if we had it in an area that we, we could get lunches to. But when you start talking about somebody is wanting online services and wants lunch and they're in the, the, um, the west of, of our county and there's only a handful and they're all spread out. But then you've got about 25 over here that are on the outskirts of town but they're in the neighborhood. Then that makes a little bit of a difference. We're just gonna have to work to see what we can do with the other. Yes, ma'am. Superintendents have met last Thursday. We have discussed what it's going to look like as we move forward and all try to be on the same page so that each county will be on the same page to the best of our ability. For example, I brought up the question to them. What are you going to do if you come in and a child comes down with the virus? Are you going to close down for what now is required for 24 hours? Or is it 72 or is it 10 days? So all that will be determined as we move along and I'll give you more information based off of that. Um, we'll be hosting, great news, we'll be hosting three classes of summer pre-K here. And uh, we got that approved, and because of the guidelines that, that have been put in place that allows us to be able to do that, and we are extremely excited about that. And we have a lot of happy parents based off the availability for the kids to be able to participate. It'll run through June 15th through the July 10th, and uh, we're looking forward to that.
y'all, the key to returning to our school in a normal fashion in Ben Hill County is this, and, that, and I mean it. Everybody's just got to be patient. Everybody's got to be flexible. We got to be all on the same team, working for the same goal. And last, we got to support each other. Yeah. There is no right or wrong answers right now. And the answers that we're coming up with are strictly for what's best for our boys and girls and our faculty and staff and our community. And there's no book that says, hey, Sean, look right here, read this and make that decision. <laughs> so we're going to do the best we can and we'll change and, and modify as we need to. And I didn't take, I didn't take a bunch of your time, but I wanted to catch you up with where we're at, where we're going. What about testing? Testing. We voted as superintendents across the state. 94% of superintendents voted testing out because of the obscurity of when kids had to leave and what they might have gotten and might not have gotten last year. So we put a great plan in place based off of that. What people don't understand is you have 12 districts in our recent. Do you realize that only two of us offered online services? Oh. Us? That's it. Two. So we were in a very good position to help our boys and girls be successful. The difference is if you're a developmentally delayed reader like I am, and there's no answer to this, I can do a packet all day with my mama or my daddy or my aunt or uncle or grandma, but I might not have the foundations of reading of what I need. And we've implemented that into the standards as the child goes to the next grade level so that we can be specific in nature for the first you know, 18 weeks of the year to implement those strategies. If those children had a health issue, we'll look at it on the individual need for a 504 based off of providing some on home services from teaching based off. Okay, one other question. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to give you better information as we as superintendents develop what that's going to look like as a 12 district model. So I'll be able to come back and give you that information as we move forward. So that we're trying to all, like we all decide to close school as well. We're all trying to implement the same strategies of what we're going to do. That if, if right now somebody came back positive, what the guidelines submit is one says 72 hours. You clean everything and you go back to normal. One says 24 hours. So we're waiting on a little more definition of what that will look like and then what that would be like if you were sitting in the classroom all together. Now, how do I handle the rest of the people that would be around that person? And we don't have that answer. As, to, um, as superintendents, are y'all looking at worst case scenario of starting school as late as after Labor Day? Yes, ma'am. Um, that is always a, a, a question. Uh, I will tell you that there are representatives from around the state that have pushed, as you well have known, over the past several years for us to start after Labor Day so that they can have a larger tax collection for summer uh, <laughs> right. events. Right. I think that's true. Um, and, and that's what they're looking for. The difference is this, and here's the easiest way I can explain it to you. If you take a system that plans on going back in normal city to gain your 180 to 90 days of instruction, quote, that's funding your receipt based off of those savings. If you modify that time and say we're going to start after Labor Day, You'll cut out all your breaks. You'll go back down to Thanksgiving as, as two or three days. Christmas would be the same, but everything else would be cut out. And you will lose funding because you still won't come up with instructional segments as a norm year. So that is not a good thing for us. 
Um, as one of your other precautions, will we'll, we check temperatures? I mean, I know that now that's not really one of the main symptoms, but it is definitely a symptom. So will we um, screen the children based on if they're feeling ill, shortness of breath, or in fevers? Right now, we've been advised by Harvard and Harvard that we are not in the business of screening people, screening children, because then we become liable as saying that you're a doctor. Um, so uh, all that is still to come. I have many, many meetings to go to about the start of school and what is going to be considered reasonable versus liability. So we want to require them to come with a mask, but we want to supply mask. No, sir. Trust me, I asked. Hand sanitizers. Hand sanitizers are a different story. <laughs> me and Mr. Newell have been working very hard to acquire new hand sanitizers to go into every school. And right now, everybody is trying to get all of them through every traction you can. But Mr. Newell's got a great contact. We've got bunch coming in but he also has a bunch on uh, waiting on order to get filled that hopefully will be here before school so we can have them pretty much throughout all the buildings everywhere you see just and of course number one thing is we will have signs everywhere in all buildings all athletic events everything about the COVID-19 process and what you should I know it's a lot, y'all. It, it's, it's a lot of, of preparing for this, that, and the other, but um, we're going to get back to, to normalcy the best way that we can or provide services the best way we can for kids and, and uh, make parents in our community successful. Other questions? I'm assuming that we're going to take the same precautions in our transportation with the buses. Yes, ma'am. Uh, as far as sanitizer and cleaning of the buses. Yes, ma'am. Um, okay. Yes, ma'am. It's a lot to take in, but in the end, maybe we won't even have the problem we normally have with school starting up with colds and spreading germs and knows it might even help us with head lice. I don't know. <laughs> it is just an issue where I look that if Disney World is going to open up, then yeah. we can go back to school and, okay. and be very precautionary in the measures of what we're, we're doing. Sounds good. Yes, sir. Good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, next item is to, uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve the uh, preschool handbook for 2021. Second. Motion second, discussion. All in favor of the uh, preschool handbook, signify say aye. 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 Any opposed are the same. Motion carries. I'll make a motion to approve the uh, Benel County School System handbook. Second. A motion second. Any discussion? Uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes, ma'am. Did we make Did we make any changes in the selection of the top ten uh, honorees? Because uh, as we talked about the top ten uh, candidates before, uh, there seems to be some language in our uh, handbook that says you have to take so many classes in the twelfth grade before you can um, actually qualify. And now since we do so many online classes and we allow our children to start getting credits in the eighth grade, many of them don't have enough credit need in the 12th grade for three classes. And so now they may have been actual um, top 10 students for grade 9, 10, and 11 and not top 10 in the 12th grade, which is a uh, it seems to go against what our real value and our philosophy is that we want students to do well, but we can't honor them. And I realize that top 10 is a rotary uh, honor, 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 but it's also something that our children strive very, very hard for. And I would hate that we've got some kind of language on page eight of our handbook that eliminates some of our best students from being celebrated. 
Ms. Shirley, if I may, we're, we're going to have to make several amendments to the handbook based off the changes from the state and everywhere else according to COVID. But this is definitely one of those as we move forward, depending on how children receive their services and what they're taking. And of course, uh, giving classes earlier in eighth grade, we're going to have to look at all of this as we move forward. So there'll be many amendments to come. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you. Any other questions about Hamburg? All in favor of the uh, 2021 school system handbook signify say aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstain? Motion carries. All right, we have the CTAE budget uh, proposal for us. I understand a motion we approve that. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? Out to the only thing that's new this year is those construction related equipment uh, grants. Uh, those are total value, those will be about $750,000 for the, the three ag grants, and then there'll be five um, grants for equipment such as mechan um, mechatronics, uh, IT, child care, those kind of things. Those, those are new this year, those have to be applied for two years out. So they'll be for FY22. We'll actually be our first year, hopefully, in the e buildings. Mm -hmm. All those in favor of the CTA budget? Um, should, should it be FY21? It should be, yes. Okay. FY21, well, it is 21 on one question. FY21, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstain? Motion carries. Any right. time motion to approve the milk bids? The board and dairy uh, 65,912.28. I'll make the motion to approve the bid for uh, board and dairy. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? <clears throat> All those in favor of the bill bid, uh, 65 say aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstain? Motion carries. And take a motion to approve the red bid to Flower Baking Company. I make that motion to approve the bread bid for flour baking company. And I do want to note that there are no foot long hot dogs. Right there. <laughs> Seven. Uh, motion and second. Motion carries. Uh, any other discussion other than the foot long? <laughs> Motion second. Motion carries. Any other discussion? Motion carries. Motion second. Food service uh, equipment bid to Trimark for the uh, new high school, five hundred twenty thousand four hundred five dollars. Uh, entertain a motion to approve. I make that motion. Second. Motion second. Now discussion. <coughs> this being paid out of food services, being paid out of supplies, being paid out of what? This largely by whatever funding we can get through the construction process. Um, school food will participate at whatever level we determine they are able to participate when we uh, look at their fund balance at the end of June. Brooks, um, we're not, we won't know what, uh, we won't have a clear picture of school food's fund balance until we close the books. At that time, we will make a um, decision as to how much money school food can afford to put in to the purchasing of this equipment. Um, and then the remainder will be paid for out of e either ELOS funds or whatever construction funding uh, that we are side is appropriate. Um, hopefully they'll be able to participate at a, at a, a good percentage, but I can't guarantee that. They can't spend all their money because they have to have operations money. Um, but we're hopeful that they'll have a, maybe 200000 or better to put into that purchase. 
and this will equip you high school. That is correct. That's what this equipment is for. Okay. Any other questions? Is there any reason we didn't go with the lowest bid? Yes, ma'am. They uh, went through a process of um, a, ma a grading matrix. Uh, the low bid did not uh, bet well. They didn't. They haven't done any jobs in Georgia, and oh. no jobs south of Pennsylvania that we could find. Uh, so they were uh, penalized pretty heavily on that aspect. The other thing was they did not specify brand or make of equipment, and. Um, that was a little uh, penalty associated with that as well. Okay. Yeah, but... <laughs> All, right. All those in favor of approving the uh, food service equipment bid to Trimark, uh, signify say no. Aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstain? Motion carries. Entertain a motion to approve the spending resolution uh, for for July. And we will do this every month until we have a budget. Mm -hmm. Basically, you're authorizing the business office to expend one twelfth of a projected uh, annual expenditure amount to continue operations in the month of July. That motion. Second. Right, motion second. Discussion? Questions? How long can we how long can we do that without a budget? We have to have a budget by the end of September by law. Um, and, and I anticipate having a budget. I hope we're able to pass a budget at the August meeting. So have we received the uh, what is it called? The NAP? The allotment sheet? No, ma'am. Yeah. Are you you thinking about the uh, set the minute rate? Yes. No, that that will happen in July as usual. Okay. Okay. No problem there. Okay. Okay. So what's holding up the budget is knowing what they want us to do at the um, at the capital, the QBE. Well, they haven't. They haven't even met and finalized the state budget yet. And until they do that, they can't tell us what our revenue position will be. So it, it's hard to, to have a budget when you don't know how much money you're going to get. So we're, we're working to, to make the expense side as small as possible, and we're hopeful that the revenues then, when we know what they are, will give us at least a balance. But, um, so now the governor has at least made a decision instead of a 14% cut, he's going with an 11% cut? Yes, ma'am, that's the new uh, figure that they're, we're working with. But it's not official yet. We won't know not until no. it's presented. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? Are all those in favor of approving the spending resolution for the month of July? Speaking by say aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstain? Motion carries. Our upcoming events. Uh, anybody want to go to graduation? I know we have a handout that's been presented to us. Anything we need to look at there? Uh, graduation is on track to be held 26, 8 o'clock. We have a great time. We've been organizing it every day. Uh, to give the students, as you say, four tickets. Uh, the designated seating area, either on the home side or the business side. And I know that's been a challenge, but parents are bringing a lot of people on graduation. So I encourage them just to uh, social distance at home and have their own private party socially. But for us, the stadium, we have our law enforcement, as well as our school staff working the gate. So if you don't have a ticket, you can't come in. So we, we hate to be like that. We're still trying to practice the state mandate on social distance. But everything is set for June 26th of the park. Okay. All right, then our next regular meeting is July the 7th. We did set a meeting for June the 25th at 6 to look at the bids. Uh, remember your personal disclosure reports are due uh, July the 1st. And 
and uh, we'll go in to personnel now. Uh, have some recommendations for teaching positions. I make a motion to approve. Ashley Falls, Dustin Beeston, Daniel Berry, Walter Rhymes, Candace Powers, Tony Edmonds, Deborah Brown, and Susan Bowman. Motion second. Any discussion? All those in favor of those recommendations signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstain? Motion carries. We have additional retirements. Uh, I'll make a motion we approve Patricia Bowie and Jane Cole. Motion second. Any discussion? All those in favor of signify by saying aye. Any opposed or abstain? Motion carries. Make a motion we approve the uh, resignation of Jennifer Faulkner. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstain? Motion carries. And we have an informational item of the transfer of Egypt Grind. Uh, to high school teachers from the uh, middle school teachers. Right. That concludes our meeting. No further business done for us tonight. I'll entertain a motion. Are we adjourned? Mr. Chairman, I move to adjourn. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? All those in favor of adjournment, signify by saying aye. Aye.